I know the Warriors deserve a lot of credit. Yeah. That's the that's the obvious. For winning, for five straight, for stepping for up in the absence it. of KD. Check, check, check. Et cetera. For all of it, right? So yep. we've got five straight NBA Finals appearance. That's what they have now. Uh, they they won the three straight games, all coming back from double-digit deficits. They put the clamps on the Rockets going back to game six in Houston without Kevin Durant first game. Uh, they're playing selfless, spirited ball, something you and I have talked about every time, mm-hmm. every game. Steve Kerr has been masterful. The bench has been stepping up, but you got to keep this in perspective and Blazer fans, don't take this the wrong way. You didn't deserve to be here. (laughs) You weren't good enough to be here. You weren't a real threat to win. The Blazers, not that this always matters, but I think in this matchup it did. The Blazers' last conference finals experience was 2000. Mm -hmm. All right, Watching the game last night, while he was phenomenal, Myers Leonard, Myers Leonard, was the answer, or at least the Blazers. Yeah, that's what they were getting excited about. He was, yeah, he was the one who was trying to stop the Warriors from sweeping them. The same Myers Leonard, who, by the way, plays with great energy. You know, he's a good athlete. He's strong. He's tough. He was really into it last night. He played great. Seventh year, uh, former first-round pick, has started 42 of 393 games. Wow. So, th- and again, this is not a diss at Leonard. Great spirit and great game. But that's the guy who was in the way of the Warriors. Am I supposed to be, you know, over the moon? No, like, I know what wow, you're what an amazing achievement. No, look, you beat a team that you're twice as good as. Look, there was you're al- supposed to. There was always a sense of overachieving this year for the Portland Trailblazers. Look, and you liked them when they came back and beat Denver. But Denver's not ready. No. Right? We know but we- I feel like Denver's more ready than... Than Portland. I, I agree. In hindsight. But I agree. Imagine if you if um no, but if the Joker had to play against dude, the Warriors, I'm not, I'm not, that would have been better. I'm not even I'm not discounting Denver at all, but I'm yeah. just saying Denver's young. Yeah. Denver the, the Portland Trailblazers are probably at their peak, right? They're not getting significantly better in a year mm-hmm. or two. Mm-hmm. The Denver Nuggets could be significantly better in a year or two. And they're and they're already really good. So Denver's still going. Mm-hmm. Portland's at its peak. And I can't see, and just reading a lot about this Portland team, some of it from uh, experience that, that that I went through when, and the Giants went through when we lost our owner. So I forget, Portland lost their owner, yeah. Paul Allen, yeah. passed away earlier this year. And so, in some sense, you take up this like this this sword, and you're saying we are the team, we are we're, we're representing, you know, his legacy. He was an uber fan, Paul mm-hmm. Allen. Mm-hmm. I mean, he spent all kinds of money. They they are they are thirty plus million over uh, the, the, the the tax line mm-hmm. and paying 15 million in, in luxury tax this year. I mean, he wanted to win and he was going to buy himself like a fan would success. And then he passed away and it was sudden. And we all, we all lament him. The NBA community does. And uh, obviously Portland does as well, but there's, there's, there's something that galvanizes inside of you when you're a player, and that happens. Because mm-hmm. he took care of them, man. There's no question about <laughs> I mean, it. And, great owner. Right? Unbelievable. Great humanitarian. Great, great guy. No and great humanitarian, as BT just mentioned. No. All of those things. Those, those guys love playing for him. That's why Damian Lillard said at the beginning of this year, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here. And we, we all commended that. But now that he's passed and his sister, uh, Jody Allen, we don't know what her plans are. We don't know if she's going to want to spend – you know, $130 million a year, right? Mm-hmm. And so they they peaked because there was obviously talent, but there was an emotional lift that came. It's not going to be there next year. So there's a chance that this Portland team, you know, as as emotionally lifted as they were, hit a superior squad, said <laughs> it doesn't, emotion's not getting us there. Mm-hmm. Talent is ultimately what matters when you get to the Western Conference or Eastern Conference Finals, uh, and especially if you would have gotten to the Finals. So I think they overachieved for a lot of, of this season and played above themselves, and I don't know how they get back there, BT. And I yeah, know they, I they got some serious contract issues coming up. What are they going to do with Dane? What are they going to do with uh, with CJ McCollum? What are they going to do with Miles Leonard? Mm-hmm. I mean, all these things you're talking I hear about. You. They, they, they almost fired answer. Stotts a year ago. I agreed. They almost fired Stotts after they got swept in the first round. Listen, again, I this is not to marginalize. If you're a Blazers fan this season, you have been given a gift. Oh, no doubt. You have There's enjoyed no doubt about the. And there's not many valleys. The peaks of this season, the twists, the turns, the velocity, and, you know, just uh, we were going to Bush Gardens. I was looking at a lot of roller coaster videos this morning. So that's why the roller coaster analogy. But that, like, that excitement as you go up, it's like, as it cranks, yeah. it's like, 
yeah. and then you descend upon whatever you descend upon at like 40 something miles per hour. You are just holding on and you are having a blast. You're screaming, you're hooting. Blazer fans, so much respect for you. No doubt. So much love for you. But the big story is the Warriors. The Warriors are America's basketball team. They've become that. Of course. And while. If if you are right that, and you, I think you might be, though we can't quantify it, I'll certainly buy that thought, that yep. they were galvanized by Paul Allen's passing and maybe overachieved a bit. What does this mean for the Warriors when they face a much better team? Because they were down three straight games, double-digit points. Now, the answer to that is, well, they were good enough to overcome it. I hear you, but if they fall... And I you know, still believe it's going to be the Bucks, but tonight's a huge one, mm. and we'll get to that later. If it's the Bucks with instead of two really good players and, you know, one or two guys who might intermittently step up, yep. the Bucks roll an eight-man rotation at you that without Kevin Durant is going to be very unforgiving. So, I, again, they're fun to watch. Steve Kerr's brilliant. The bench has been involved. You know, Steph Curry's reasserted himself as one of the best players in the game. But Damian Lillard, going back to Game 7 against Denver when he shot 3 for 17, shot 36% this series. C.J. McCollum was sub-40%. I can't get overly enthusiastic about the Warriors, what, the, what the Warriors just did. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, the uh, the only thing, I can't do it. Well, the only thing I'll say is that I re found my appreciation. I talked about this a little bit yesterday of Draymond Green because he's so damn engaged and active and a do everything player. He's 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 the energy guy. He's their catalyst, obviously. He's their alpha in a sense. He's their enforcer. He's everything on this on this team. And when in the absence of KD. He picked up a lot of the slack on both ends of the court, BT, but particularly offensively. So I would, it's not what I would have thought. And at least I had forgotten that he was this kind of player uh, who would knock down an open three-pointer when things got a little convoluted. They're trying to switch like six times with, with, with Steph Curry. He ultimately can't get a shot, so he just kicks it out to Draymond, who drills a three-pointer, right? And then he's mm-hmm. leading the break, and he's dishing. Now that, that assist, I forget, I forget what quarter it was in. He just threw this, this bounce pass to Steph as he was cutting in the lane. That was early. Yeah, that was pretty early. Relatively early. I didn't come first or second period, but whatever. I mean, it was was on the money. He's he's balling. So Draymond's picking up the slack. And so I enjoyed it because I like seeing how championship-level teams respond to adversity. Not that losing KD is adversity because they have so many other talent anyways, Mm -hmm. but they didn't miss a beat offensively. And it's just awesome to watch the assist and everything else. And Steph finally, you know, being the consistent three-point shooter that we've grown to love over the years. That's what I appreciate. Yeah, I know they were down. Uh, I don't know if it's lackadaisical nature or is it or is it just a, or the Blazers who you have to give credit, you know, playing desperate basketball, right? So there's a there, there's you got to give credit both ways, but at the end of the day, the Warriors with or without KD are simply the better team. There's no doubt. 855-212-4227. Like I look at the Blazers, right? And you know, always rooting for Mo Harkless, St. John's kid. Uh, obviously, Seth Curry, good story. You know, starting to find a little niche in the NBA. You could shoot. You could obviously carve out a couple of the years, and he can shoot. Actually, a pretty scrappy defender as well. Mentioned Myers Leonard. Obviously, you get past the two stars, Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum. Uh, Edis Canther's a good story, though he's been a bit banged up. They could have used Yurkic. There's a lot of stories here. Uh, I, I, I get that. But, like, when I watch the Western Con- or the Eastern Conference, when I watch the conference finals, I need to see three guys. And maybe I'm getting, you know, I'm I'm falling prey to the new NBA. Uh, Because maybe back in the day, like when, and it was only a five-game series, but I didn't, like, process when the Sixers played the Lakers in 01. Mm -hmm. And they won the first game in Philly. Mutombo, Eric Snow, McKee, of course, AI, that crew. Like, I, I didn't look at them and say, going into it, if I could recollect what I said on the air, even though I was just starting my career, so I probably said something <laughs> wrong. Uh, I, I didn't look at like, well, they, you know, they don't have multiple stars. It was just kind of position by position, less star-oriented in terms of my dissection mm-hmm. and more which team has the more checks, who's a better rebounder, who shoots better, who's better who's, who's better coach, whatever it might be. And now I'm watching the Blazers. I can't help but think, imagine if they had somebody like, I don't know, thrust Jimmy Butler into the middle of the series. Just thrust Jimmy Butler into the series. Yeah. You know? It changes You know, imagine that? It changes it significantly. Uh, can you make the case Portland could win? Of course. Exactly. I mean, they could have won any three of those games. That's what I'm saying. And I, I guess what I'm really saying is I'm 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 not 
I'm not jumping on the Warriors Express to just cruise to a championship, no matter whom they play. Yeah. Like, if they play the Raptors, I think this, if Kawhi's fully healthy, and they won't play the Raptors if Kawhi's not fully healthy because they won't beat the Bucks if he's not fully healthy. You get the point. You know, whether it's a Nick Nurse and the Raptors and they're, and they're scrappy uh, role players, or the Bucks who roll out seven, eight deep with, with some shooters, I mean... I, I don't know that I expect the Warriors to win the championship. I mean, it's hard. I just don't. I, it, look, not the, right the, now. The I don't. Only, the only thing that gives you, I guess, hope or not hope, but just assurance, because hope's the wrong word. You definitely have hope, but assurance for the Warriors is they got ten days, nine days, nine days for Kevin Durant to get healthy. Nine days. You think he's playing game one? Game one is uh, May 30th. Here's the schedule. May 30th, June 2, June 5, June 7, games one through four. I do. Y- you do? I do. You think, think he's, he's playing game one? I think he's going to play. I don't think he's playing game one. I think he's going to play game I don't one. think he is. I mean, I hope you're right. I yeah. want to see him. Uh, if necessary, game five, six, and seven, June 10, June 13, and then June 16th, which basically knocks on the door of the draft and then knocks on the door of free agency. So there's a lot of stories still Yet, uh, yet to be fully written here in the NBA season, but um, you know, I, I, it's not the way I want to see the season end. Like a, 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 a Kevin Durant, a, a, um, a Kevin Durantless Warriors team. Yeah, I just that's not what I want to see. Mm-hmm. And and I would I would disagree. Again, I hope you're right. I don't think he's playing game one. I mean, he didn't even travel, which means I don't want to put him up in the air because or, there's or, the pressure aspect of it. True, or he he just. You know he's not going to play, so why travel? Root on your teammates. A lot of injured yeah. guys go and root on their mates, True. sit on the bench, I right? I see that, but you know? still. All right. I mean, I'm not going to get on him for yeah. not being there, but I'm sure it's medically driven. Um, you know, and then I, I, I look at the the fact that he's going to be reevaluated this week. So from not stepping on the court to a reevaluation later this week, we think he's going to play full contact game one? I don't think so. 